This video is about replacing the sensor arm light bulb with an LED assembly in a Biogram 4002 or 4004. I will discuss the sensor circuitry, I will show how to upgrade it and I will show how to install the uh, LED assembly. For more information please visit us at biolover.blogspot.com or go to www.biolover.com. This shows the sensor arm in action. Its purpose is to detect uh, whether there is a record or not and with that information the uh, electronics of the biogram determine whether the uh, arm can be lowered on the platter or not. The way this works is we have a light bulb at the end of the sensor that shines light onto the platter through a lens and then the light is being reflected uh, back into the arm through a second lens onto a photocell which converts that light into a voltage. And so you can imagine if there is a record uh, under the uh, sensor arm then there is very little light falling on the sensor and also the signal, the light signal will be uh, pretty much constant and so we will get a constant voltage from that uh, photocell which will be uh, very close to zero. Now if there is no record and we have those black ribs alternating with the highly reflective aluminum surface then we get a significant alternating uh, voltage uh, coming from this uh, sensor and this difference in the signals of course can be used by the uh, sensor circuitry of the biogram to determine whether the arm can be lowered safely or not. It also allows it to find where the run-in groove is uh, so this enables the biogram to uh, put the needle down uh, regardless whether you put an uh, uh, LP uh, a 10 inch or 7 inch uh, a single on the uh, deck. It will find where the record starts and then put down the arm in the proper location. Okay, let's discuss the uh, sensor arm circuit uh, real quick. This here is the photocell. This here is the light bulb in the end of the a sensor arm. The photocell whenever falls light on it emits a voltage. This voltage is fed through capacitor 12 on to into the base of TR3 and so whenever we have a voltage here at TR3 uh, superimposed to its uh, biasing voltage then the transistor turns on and that uh, breaks down the voltage here at the collector to zero and so that has the consequence that we get a amplified signal at the collector which typically is uh, about 6 volts and whenever a rib comes by it breaks down to zero. Now the capacitor here makes sure that only alternating voltages get fed through to the uh, a, a transistor and if the voltage is constant then transistor 3 does not turn on. This allows us to play reflective records. So if you have a white record or something that you know, doesn't look black then you can still detect it with this circuit. Okay, so this uh, alternating 6 volt signal is fed into uh, C16 which then uh, goes on to uh, the base of TR4 and whenever the voltage here goes low then TR4 is turned on. It's a, a PNP transistor that is hooked up here with its emitter to 21 volts. And so when this transistor turns on, then we charge up the capacitor here. And so when, when the capacitor is charged, then via this one mega ohm resistor, we pull up the base of a TR6. So whenever we have an alternating signal generated here when the ribs go underneath when there is no record then TR6 is being turned on and that means that the uh, signal at its collector which is normally 15 or 16 volts is being connected to ground and so it goes to zero here and this is interpreted by the circuitry as a blocking signal for the arm lowering uh, circuit. So whenever we have zero volts here then arm lowering doesn't work anymore and that prevents the arm from uh, uh, lowering the needle onto the uh, platter. One more thing before we roll up our sleeves and really exchange finally that light bulb with the LED assembly. 
In order to make this detector arm circuit work reliably and according to specifications, we need to update this circuit here around uh, TR3. TR3 is the amplifier for the photocell and its working point should be adjusted that there is uh, just 4 volts at the collector. This is done here with a single uh, resistor that is connected between the uh, collector and the base and so the voltage here through the resistor pulls the base up and supposedly is just turn on the transistor enough that we get here 4 volts. Now if we know exactly the HFA, the current gain uh, of this transistor, we can dimension this resistor here properly that we just get the 4 volts. However, across a certain batch of transistors of the same type, the one parameter of these transistors that will vary the most is that current gain. So we can assume that each biogram has a transistor in here with a different current gain and that means that a lot of biograms don't have the 4 volts and that means if the current gain is too high, which it is typically uh, for this circuit, then uh, the amplitude of the amplified uh, uh, photocell signal is too small and that makes this detection circuit unreliable because if you remember this capacitor down there needs to be charged based on this uh, voltage that makes it through to TR4. So anyway, in order to get the 4 volts here precisely we need to change the um, resistor here in order to match each transistor precisely for each biogram and of course that is done best with a variable resistor namely a multi-turn trimmer that we started replacing R26 with. Now the other issue of the circuit is that if the current gain is too low then this uh, circuit has a too small uh, voltage gain for the photocell signal and this may mean that the signal then uh, is too too weak to really uh, pull down the um, uh, amplitude to zero. So that usually if you cannot get down to zero here and the light bulb or the LED assembly has been has been optimized with its position in the sensor compartment that means then that the transistor here most likely does not have enough current gain. So we need to essentially make sure that we have a transistor here that has a current gain that is above 500 then this here starts working very reliably even if this is not so perfect and uh, we need to put here a, a trimmer resistor a trimmable resistor in with which we can then adjust the working point that we get the 4 volts. I realize this is a little bit of complicated explanation um, so I made a quick and dirty simulation in iCircuit. This is TR3, this here is the biasing resistor. I already put in a trimmer. So if you look at it here, it's a 2 mega ohm trimmer that is at half position right now. So we have the 1 mega ohm here right now. And this transistor I set to 500 uh, HFE. And so you see here, this here is a, a voltage gauge hooked up to the uh, collector. We see here that we have 2.8 volt at this point. Um, and so this is actually often uh, what you find in a, a biogram when you uh, start working on it. The transistor is around 500 and the 1 mega ohm resistor then uh, uh, puts, it, uh, puts the collector to like 3 volts or a little bit below that. So if we want to adjust this to the uh, prescribed 4 volts, so we get the big nice amplitude in our output of this amplifier, we need to play with this uh, resistor. And so if you lower the resistance, then you see here the voltage goes down, so we need to go in the other direction. So we need to put a larger resistor here. And so you see here, if I go to 85%, we are above 4 uh, volt on the collector. So maybe at 1.6, 1.7 mega ohm, finally we have the 4 volts here. So this is the reason why we put in this trimmer. And then for a given transistor, we simply adjust it that we get the uh, 4 volt here. Let's look real quick what happens if we have a HFE that is too low. 
right? Remember, a low HFE gives us poor amplification, so while this helps us with the voltage at the collector, uh, 7 volts here now with this setting, the amplitude of the signal that comes out here would be much smaller than 6 volts, so we would have a large offset relative to uh, ground. So, when I start working on this, uh, on, on replacing the uh, light bulb in the sensor arm, the first thing is I remove the resistor and I take out the transistor and I measure the transistor to see what its uh, uh, HFE is. So let's get going. This shows the solder side of the main PCB as you find it when you remove the uh, aluminum panels and the platter of the biogram. This here is TR3 and this here is the biasing resistor R26. So the first step is to take these two components out. The next step is to flip the board up. Now we remove the two components, transistor and resistor. The next step is testing of the transistor. So the transistor is now here in this fixture and I fired up the testing process and so what we get here is for this particular transistor is that it has an uh, HFE of 576 and so this transistor is good enough so we can continue using it and just put it back in onto the uh, PCB. Back in you go. So I flipped the board back over and now it's time to solder that transistor back in. The next step is now to put the trimmer temporarily in uh, on, onto the solder points of R26 from the top side here so we can adjust it uh, while the uh, biogram is powered up. So I put it in and solder it in temporarily. The next step is powering up the uh, biogram so we need to plug in everything. And I usually also fixate the uh, PCB in place with a couple screws so we don't make an accidental uh, short circuit because it doesn't sit properly. Now we hook up the multimeter between ground and the collector. At this point it's time to plug in the biogram and start it up. And so you see here now 3.4 volts and now I adjust this trimmer that I get up to 4. After this we can turn the biogram off and remove the trimmer so we can put it in from the other side. So I flip the board back up and insert the trimmer on the component side. Now board down again and we solder in the trimmer. Now the next step is to solder in a lead here that's connected to the collector of TR3 because we need to take an oscilloscope measurement while the biogram is running with its platter inserted. So we need to be able to connect here while the platter is covering this and so we need to put in a uh, jumper so to connect the oscilloscope. Next step is to get the lead out of the way so it doesn't chafe on the uh, platter. Now we can put the uh, platters in. We don't need the belt for this, we can just manually rotate it. Okay, now we're finally ready to exchange the bulb with the LED. I put uh, some cloth here to protect the platter underneath. And now we need to pull out the uh, sensor compartment, bulb and sensor compartment. So you can just with fingernails grab it and then pull it out carefully. Now we can unsolder the uh, leads of the bulb. So let's do the right side first here. And the left side. 
sorry I'm covering up here it's a little bit difficult to get around the camera now we can pull the bulb out the next step is to insert the uh, LED assembly so this here is the LED it is a warm white LED which is on a flexible uh, PCB and it has a bypass circuit with a resistor that burns a little bit of energy here so it behaves like the light bulb that's necessary that the uh, sensor circuit believes that there is actually a working uh, light bulb in this compartment otherwise it would also shut down the arm lowering uh, mechanism so this is why uh, there is a little circuit on this board in addition to the uh, LED so now we need to fold this up that it uh, fits in here and then pull the leads through these two slits and then solder them back on uh, so this um, assembly is uh, ready for drop in nothing else needs to be done it just pops in like the light bulb once it is folded and so here this can be a little bit tricky sometimes to get these leads through here so um, there we go and now it is in the compartment before we can solder it in we need to position it correctly usually it works best if one pushes the LED assembly all the way forward but in some biograms it can be also better in this position this depends a little bit where that um, a photo cell is located on the other side here so sometimes one has to uh, move this a little bit in order to get a good signal on the oscilloscope so here I push it forward and now it's time to solder the leads in so it's good to put a little bit of flux on the solder points and then we can just hold the leads to them and touch them with the soldering iron and that should be enough in most cases it's a little bit difficult for me here around the camera so <laughs> a little bit messy all right so it's soldered after cutting off the leads it's good to bend the remaining length inwards so that there is no possibility of making a short circuit with the aluminum profile here and now it's time for the oscilloscope measurement and so for that we need to create a signal and so for that we drive the carriage onto the platter and then we set the platter into motion manually if everything went well you will see something like this here on your oscilloscope and here it went well because the amplitude that we're seeing is around 6 volts and we get that characteristic shape that is shown in the uh, circuit diagram if you don't get the uh, a large enough amplitude then as uh, pointed out earlier uh, usually the transistor doesn't have the a, a high enough uh, HFE or it is not adjusted properly to 4 volts at the uh, collector and of course the third option is that the LED is not in the right position inside the uh, bulb compartment so sometimes one has to play a little bit more until uh, this trace looks proper and now we can turn the biogram off and push the sensor compartment back into the uh, profile sometimes the PCB sticks up a little bit as you just saw and so one has to push it down in order to get the compartment smoothly back in and this is the end of our video now you know how to replace the bulb in a sensor arm of a biogram 4002 or 4 with an LED assembly like all of our parts this part is available just get in touch there is a contact form at biolover.logsport.com or send an email to the email address that is in the description of this video or also at the blog thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed it